Hello there, my name is Marco Pozzetta and this is the second part of my talk for the first season of GAP. And I'm going to talk about the problem of convergence for uh, geometric flows. So uh, here is the outline of today. Uh, by the way, yeah, in the first part uh, we have discussed the concept of um, loyesievich simon gradient inequality and how to apply it uh, to the simplified but non-trivial context of, uh, of uh, gradient flows in, uh, in Hilbert spaces. And um, it, it already contains all the, all the basic uh, and most important uh, ideas uh, from the uh, application point of view of, the, uh, of that inequality to the, to the convergence problem. Instead of this time, uh, I want to introduce, uh, I want to give an overview on extrinsic geometric flows I want to present the problem of convergence with some motivating examples and, um, and results. And uh, I also want to, to mention our main results, specifically I want to state uh, one of them. Uh, the, the results of mine with uh, Carlo Mantegazza are contained in these uh, references. If you are interested, you can find all of them on, online, on the archive, for example. And um, we will uh, discuss the, the, the proof of one of these results in the, in the next part. Uh, there will be no proofs in, in, in this part specifically, uh, but uh, yeah, instead I want to, to discuss uh, problems and, uh, and results. Okay, um, so let me start uh, with the, all the basic definitions, uh, okay, so that uh, everybody hopefully can, can understand the, the, the basic ideas. We're going to speak about extrinsic geometric flows. So first of all, we need uh, the concept of extrinsic geometric energy. It is going to be eventually a functional, an energy, uh, depending on uh, geometric objects in an extrinsic way, in the following sense. We fix a, a domain that is, uh, let's say, a k-dimensional, closed manifold, closed mean uh, um, compact and without boundary, and um, we consider functions E from the set of possible immersions, C, of m into rn and with positive no negative values okay and um, so you can see uh, you can think uh, of e as our energy indeed and sorry it is um, our energy in the sense that it, it depends exactly on, on the specific immersion of how it is immersed our manifold m inside an ambient and and this is why we call it extrinsic and it is geometric in the sense that it is invariant with respect to diffeomorphisms of M, right? So, of course, if two immersions differ for a diffeomorphism of, of the domain, the geometric object inside Rn doesn't change, and so we require that the energy doesn't change as well. So we're going to give some examples in, in, uh, in a minute, but uh, this is the, the, the abstract concept to keep, to keep in mind. Once I have an extrinsic geometric energy, I may perform a first variation of the energy. This is going to be a different comp a concept with respect to, to the one we have seen in the last part, in the linear structure, in the linear theory, where the first variation of a functional is a, another specific functional uh, with, with a specific definition. Here, instead, the, the notion of first variation is, is a geometric computation motivated by, by the geometry of the problem. And it is the following concept. Um, you fix an immersion, C0, of uh, your M inside Rn, and consider a one-parameter family, a uh, smooth one-parameter family uh, of other immersions, C epsilon. Okay? And you try to compute the derivative with respect to epsilon of the energy evaluated along C epsilon, evaluated then at epsilon equal to zero. Okay? In this way, you, you get a notion of first variation in the sense that you see how your energy varies uh, with a, a, a little perturbation of a fixed immersion Ψ0. Okay? And the fact is that whenever E is sufficiently regular, okay, don't care about the hypothesis too much at this level, uh, you can perform this computation and you usually obtain the following. You obtain a so um, an expression that is linear with respect to the following vector field, with a variation vector field 
d epsilon psi epsilon okay and it is uh, linear with respect to it so you you see an expression of the form of a linear operator depending on e and c0 applied to this vector field i call it vector field but it is in fact an rn valued map along m of course okay and um, yeah and uh, the fact that you have this linear structure uh, motivates you to give the following uh, to write the following equality that maybe you can choose a duality, a scalar product, in order to rewrite this expression as a duality between the variation vector field d epsilon c epsilon applied against okay, a scalar product with, for example, another vector field that we denote by nabla e c0 which represents, uh, which eventually this duality gives you the same result, of course, of this uh, linear operator applied to, to the vector field d epsilon c epsilon. And um, of course, this is um, different from what we had in the case of Hilbert spaces, where, for example, the choice of nabla e was, uh, 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 was specific and, and given by the least representation theorem. Instead, here, the, the, the form of nabla e c0 depends on a choice of a duality you, you make when you write the second equality here. Okay, yeah, by the way, uh, once uh, you have performed this computation and you have chosen a duality, well, then you may define the gradient flow, the geometric gradient flow, depending on the choice of a duality, by the following evolution uh, equation, evolution problem. You have a um, time-dependent uh, family of immersions of your domain uh, m inside Rn, we use the letter phi for, for those, and the driving velocity of the flow, the t phi, is given by minus nabla e evaluated along phi, so minus the vector field appearing here, evaluated instead of c0 along the time-dependent parametrization phi, okay? So the picture you should have in mind is roughly the, the following, and uh, defines an extrinsic geometric flow. We have an assigned evolution equation, and the fact is that there is a fixed domain and a one-parameter family of immersion phi, and all along this uh, uh, image in the ambient Rn, you may imagine that the driving velocity, uh, driving each point uh, uh, in its evolution, is given by minus nabla e evaluated along, uh, along phi, right? It's going to be an Rn valued uh, vector field, this. And, uh, okay, it's a very common concept, but I wanted to spend some, some minutes on, uh, on it. So now, um, Ah, yeah, I want to give uh, uh, an example. This is uh, the most basic in the sense that it is uh, easy to, to, to define, but it is uh, today a, a modern topic of investigation. It is the mean curvature flow. It is uh, the gradient flow that you obtain uh, considering the area functional. So um, given an immersion, the area of such immersion, which is actually a, a k-dimensional volume if m is k-dimensional, is just the, the total volume of m computed with respect to the measure induced by, by the immersion. If you do the computation of the first variation described before for the area functional, you get, if you perform the, the computation, you just get this integral uh, over m with respect to the measure of c0 of the variation field times, up, up to sign, times the mean curvature vector of the immersion c0 that I'm not going to define right now. This is the outcome of the computation, but then you may say, ah, you know what, here I just recognize the L2 scalar product with respect to the measure mu psi zero uh, between the variation field and this vector, and the mean curvature vector of, uh, of psi zero. And once I, I choose to recognize the, for example, the L2 duality, uh, well, then I can define the L2 gradient flow phi by the evolution dt phi equals minus nabla, right? So equal the mean curvature vector along, uh, along phi. We also always uh, understand that there is uh, also some uh, uh, initial, initial datum at, at time zero, that is some phi zero we, we don't really care about, okay? So this is just to, to give uh, an example that uh, we'll come back uh, later. If you are interested in the basic theory of uh, the classical theory of mean curvature flow, I really suggest the book by Carlo Mantegatta on, on this. And, uh, okay, so we have definitions, we have an example, 
And um, the problem we are going to study is about the qualitative behavior of such an extrinsic geometric flow and specifically about the long time behavior of, of, of it, right? When I give you an evolution equation and uh, a, an initial datum, you may uh, study the so-called short time existence. So you want to understand whether the flow starts and whether it is unique. But then in case the flow exists for uh, all times, you want to understand the long time behavior. So what happens? as time increases up to plus infinity. And uh, as we discussed also last time, at least two possibilities may occur. And in this case, we need to define what we mean by convergence and subconvergence, not in the case of Hilbert uh, spaces, of gradient flows in Hilbert spaces, but instead in the context of these extrinsic geometric flows. And in this, in this case, it is uh, a bit different from uh, what we saw last time, and it is the following. Let's say that you already know that we have a, a, a geometric flow existing for all times, okay? Smooth, everything is smooth. Well, then we say that the flow smoothly converges if there is any, any immersion, a limit immersion, phi infinity, and a family, a one parameter family of diffeomorphisms of the domain such that there exists the full limit as t goes to plus infinity of phi at time t composition with the diffeomorphisms and it equals a, 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 such uh, phi infinity and the limit occurs in cm for any m say uh, this is why we, we call it smooth uh, convergence uh, okay so uh, the convergence once again is the existence of the full limit approaching a fixed immersion and of course uh, here uh, we have the presence of these uh, possible family of diffeomorphisms and uh, this may, may seem strange if you are not used to but um, in uh, in general uh, the, the presence of diffeomorphisms uh, is, is uh, is, is essential in this case and it, it's not a problem i mean in the sense if you compose with the diffeomorphism your uh, composition the, the geometric object is, is actually not changing okay so this is um, a, te a technical fact think of it as a, a technical fact the presence of this the presence of these uh, diffeos and uh, actually of course this composition do not change the the geometric object itself which is converging as a full limit to a limit immersion okay and um, instead we say that the flow subconverges if uh, the convergence holds along a sequence of times and also up to translations so if there is a sequence of times tj going to plus infinity, a limit phi infinity, a sequence now of diffeomorphisms, and also a sequence of points in the ambient, Rn, such that the limit along such time composition with such diffus translation minus pj goes to, to this uh, immersion phi infinity in cm for any m. So in this case, and this is different from the simplified case we have seen in the, in the first part, not only we are saying that uh, subconvergence means that you have convergence along a sequence of time, but also it may happen that uh, your flow is diverging to, to, to the infinity of Rn, is going out of any compact sets. This may happen in general, why not? And so we are admitting the possibility of, uh, of needing some, a sequence of translations minus pj in order to take back uh, my, my flow, which is diverging, in order to see something uh, at finite in, in, in Rn, which is a limit immersion phi infinity, okay? So two very different uh, notions, and again, we want to, our uh, final problem will be to understand how to prove convergence out of knowing subconvergence, which is uh, many times the outcome of uh, uniform bounds on the flow, right? Uh, why does your flow exist for any time? Then maybe because you discovered to have some uniform estimates for all times and out of uniform estimates by compactness, right? By pre-compactness, you know subconvergence, but uh, it is, as we already discussed, it is much more difficult to, to, to argue convergence without uh, an, an additional tool, an additional argument. Okay, good. Um, why do we care about the convergence of a gradient flow? 
Uh, of course, the first answer is uh, the one we all, always introduced in this uh, in this talk, and it is well because that's just the question we want to answer, okay? And uh, I want just to mention a few recent contribution uh, um, about uh, about this. Uh, the first reason why you would like to understand it is it is because it is part of the qualitative mm, description of the flow. You want to understand whether or not a flow converges to a critical point, yes, because out of the smooth conversion, it, it, it is just like uh, that phi infinity we have seen before is uh, a, a point where the flow stops at infinity. So eventually, out of a smooth convergence, you also argue that phi infinity is um, a critical point of, um, of the energy that is uh, a, an immersion such that if you perform the first variation, you just get the zero operator. And uh, so you want to understand uh, this, whether this happens or not. These are just uh, a few recent uh, contributions by the Lacqua Pozzi Spanner for uh, uh, the elastic flow of uh, open curves, or by Fabian Rupp uh, for uh, the Wilmore flow under some uh, constraints along the flow, and our results I, I mentioned before. And the important fact is that all these contributions have something in common, that is the, the use of the loyasiewicz simon inequality for getting the convergence out of the subconvergence. And I will come back, of course, much, uh, much more diffusely later on, on, on this uh, part. And instead, now I want to give you some uh, further uh, um, motivations for studying the, the, the long time behavior and the convergence of a flow. Another spontaneous uh, question, indeed, is, is the following, is about the stability of critical points, and I want to discuss it by uh, mentioning a, a specific example given by this beautiful paper by Chil uh, Fashangova and Schatzler uh, from 2009, uh, that is more or less uh, the, first, uh, the first example uh, uh, of uh, application to a modern gradient flow of the modern uh, theory of loyasiewicz simon inequalities developed by Chile in the work we already mentioned of uh, 2003. And uh, they studied the following. Uh, they studied the Wilmore flow of surfaces in RN. So what's the geometric energy? It is the Wilmore energy. For a given immersion of a surface in RN, the Wilmore energy is uh, basically the squared L2 norm of the mean curvature of the, of the immersion. Then you perform the first variation, you recognize an L2 duality, and you define the L2 gradient flow uh, to be the, the Wilmore, the so-called Wilmore flow, okay? And the fact is the following, that um, uh, in general, it is known that the Wilmore flow uh, develops singularities. It means that it is, uh, it, it is false uh, in general that uh, your flow exists for all time. So you, you, you just can't ask for uh, the convergence of, um, of, uh, of this flow because maybe it develops singularities. What does it mean to develop singularities? Well, essentially that something goes wrong in finite time. Most of the times uh, you have that some uh, geometric quantity, like uh, the curvature, the mean curvature, or the second fundamental form, maybe blows up in, in, fina in finite time, right? And if this happens, of course, uh, your, uh, your flow is uh, no longer defined after that uh, limit time, and uh, then you, you can't ask for, uh, for a long time behavior, because uh, just because your flow is defined for, for uh, a, a bounded interval of times. Okay, but um, this is the general uh, answer, but maybe uh, you can ask, okay, in, ge in general, your flow uh, does develop singularities, but what happens if you also add the hypothesis that your flow now is starting from a specific um, initial datum? For example, a, an initial datum that is sufficiently close to a critical point. So if you start close to a critical point, well, then, you can say something more about, uh, about the behavior of the flow, and the answer is yes. The answer is yes, and we refer to such a result uh, as a property of stability of critical points. So specifically, uh, among the results, uh, they have, the, um, roughly speaking, the, the, the following theorem, that uh, if the Wilmore flow uh, starts from an immersion that is suitably close to a suitable definition of local minimizer for the Wilmore energy, 
Well, then that flow exists for all times. It remains close to that uh, local minimizer C bar and it converges to a local uh, minimizer as t goes to plus infinity. It smoothly converges. So uh, you have a flow that in general develops singularities, but, for, uh, but the critical points are uh, in a sense stable, in the sense that if you start uh, with an initial datum close to them, well then you don't have singularities and you have uh, long time uh, smooth convergence. Okay, that's uh, pretty pretty interesting. This is another property you would like to understand, uh, but maybe the most classical motivation for studying the, um, the long time behavior of, of a flow is given by the following example, the blow up analysis. And once again, to describe what I mean by blow up analysis, I want to mention a couple of facts about, uh, I want to give an example, and I want to mention a couple of facts about the mean curvature flow. The mean curvature flow is another example of a um, uh, flow uh, developing singularities, okay? And uh, there is a wide study about uh, singularities because for several reasons you would like to understand more explicitly what happens at a singularity, at a singularity, okay? So let's consider the following example. Let's say that phi is a mean curvature flow up to translation in time defined on a negative interval uh, of times from minus tau to zero. So you, are, you have immersion of your fixed manifold M inside Rn, and let's say that there is a singularity at time zero at the origin. So mm, this, uh, in, in what I mean with this is the following, that the flow is smooth up to time zero, but uh, let's say that we are in a situation uh, where the mm, second fundamental form, the, the curvature of your immersion, is blowing up as time approaches zero, and this happens exactly at the origin in Rn. So let's say that you can imagine that uh, your, uh, the image of your immersion is passing through the origin in Rn, and exactly at the origin, the, the, um, uh, the, the curvature of the immersion is, is blowing up. Okay, in the theory, you can divide between a couple of cases. If you know about what I'm talking, I'm imagining to, to have a singularity of first kind. If you don't know what it means, well, just forget about this phrase, okay? How, and the, the fact is that you would like to understand what happens at the singularity. Uh, we, we, and we are imagining that uh, uh, the, the curvature blows up at the origin in the sense that you have a sort of a concentration of curvature. How can we study what happens exactly at the origin, what, what happens infin infinitesimally close to the origin? Well, the, the most basic idea is, is to do a blow-up analysis, so to dilate the, the, the ambient space Rn, to zoom around the origin, to look more closely, more closely what happens at the origin. That's the, the, the classical idea, and it is called to, to perform a blow-up analysis. So what do we do? The, the idea is to uh, derive uh, what is called the tangent flow. A tangent flow is a, a limit flow, phi tilde, defined for any negative time, and it is the limit of any sequence of the following form. Uh, we have a sequence of numbers, delta k going to zero, and we take the following space-time dilation of my mean curvature flow. In particular, look at the fact that in front of the immersion we have this 1 over delta k, delta k is going to zero, so indeed I am doing a sort of dilation, a blow-up of this immersion around the, the, the origin. And when I pass to the limit delta k, I may imagine that uh, if I can extract uh, a limit, well, th then this phi tilde maybe is a good description of the concentration that is happening at the origin. Indeed, it is a good, uh, a good description of what happens at the singularity, and it is called a tangent flow. And now, um, you can see a first problem is the following, that uh, the limit phi infinity depends in general on, on the sequence delta k you, you have chosen, right? So maybe if you, if you chose another uh, infinitesimal sequence delta k, you would get another tangent flow. So the um, spontaneous question is, are tangent flows unique? Are tangent flows unique? So uh, is it true that they do not depend on the choice of, the infi of this infinitesimal sequence delta, delta k? 
because in such case, if I have uniqueness of tangent flows, well then, uh, yes, I can say that I have a good description of what happens at the, at the singularities, because uh, e e any possible rescaling leads me to, to the same tangent flow, so to the same picture, to the same description of the, of the concentration happening at the singularity. So I want to understand for these reasons whether tangent flows are unique or not. How can I do this? And the interesting fact is that you can understand this uniqueness behavior by studying another rescaling of the mean curvature flow. That is the following, the so-called rescaled mean curvature flow that appears even more complicated in a sense. So don't care too much about the specific uh, expressions uh, here. But again, the fact is that you have a nonlinear reparameterization of the time parameter and uh, a, a rescaling in space again, right? Depending on time. And um, you end up uh, with uh, a, a, a rescaled flow. It solves another evolution equation, which is in a sense uh, similar to mean curvature flow, related to mean curvature flow, because the driving velocity now is mean curvature plus one half position vector of your immersion. An important fact is that this uh, new rescaled flow, it exists for every time and it is a gradient flow. Specifically, it is the L2 flow of the following energy, no longer of the area, but of a weighted area, where the weight is this Gaussian weight, depending on uh, the, the, um, the squared norm of the position vector of, uh, of your immersion. Okay, so we discussed about tangent flow. We have another uh, flow that is the rescaled mean curvature flow, but the fact is that the uniqueness of tangent flows, which was our first problem, oh sorry, our first problem is equivalent to the smooth convergence of this rescaled mean curvature flow xi as its uh, parameter s goes to plus infinity. So you may solve the problem of uniqueness of tangent flow by understanding the long time behavior, the convergence of another flow. And it is indeed what uh, was done in uh, some recent uh, contribution. I want to mention some um, very, very important uh, papers on this problem. The first one by Schulze, then there was Kolding Minicotti, and then again Chodo Schulze very, very recently, uh, where uh, they proved uh, uniqueness of tangent flows passing through the uh, um, uh, smooth convergence of the rescaled mean curvature flow. And once again, the, the basic tool the, the, at, the, at the core of the proof is the application uh, among a lot of technical problems, but at some point there is the application of a Loyasiewicz Simon uh, inequality uh, that uh, is again at the again uh, at the core of, of of the proof of the argument. Okay, so this was a list of results and motivations for uh, for studying the um, yeah the the problem. And um, now I want to uh, just, uh, yeah, just conclude by mentioning uh, one of our results, one in collaboration with uh, Carlo Mantegazza, that is the most recent and in a sense, the, the, um, in a sense that maybe it will be clear in a minute, in a sense, the, the, the most general among our, among our result, uh, results. And uh, it, is, uh, it is the following. Uh, of course, I need to define the, the flow and the energy, and we are going to consider uh, evolutions of hypersurfaces in Rn. So now we will consider for, for simplicity Rn plus 1, and the M is going to be a closed manifold of dimension n. If you want, think of it orientable, doesn't need it, you, you don't need it, but uh, okay, uh, it simplifies some, some consideration if you think it is orientable. Um, for an immersion C of M inside Rn plus 1, fix also a number M in N, greater or equal than uh, 1, M, and uh, let nu be a unit normal field along the immersion C. Okay, so it exists, thinking that M is orientable. And uh, 
we will need this squared norm of the nth covariant derivative of nu that uh, uh, is uh, is defined by the following it is just the the sum over all components of nu of the squared norm of the mth uh, covariant derivative of uh, the component nu alpha and in, in, in this moment nu alpha is just a scalar function over over m so everything makes sense and also we will need um, in order to simplify the notation the scalar product between the mean curvature vector and this choice of nu and this is going to be denoted simply by h c okay so it's the mean curvature the value of the mean curvature in direction nu if you want we consider the following energy functional the energy functional is indexed over m the same m here and fm of c is given by the integral of one plus that squared norm of the covariant derivative of, of nu okay so what's uh, measuring this uh, this energy? Okay, I'm going to give a couple of examples in, in a minute, but here you find, of course, the, the total area, the volume given by this one, plus the norm of some derivative of the normal vector. Now, if you take, uh, very roughly speaking, if you take the derivative of nu once, you get an information on, on the curvature, right? On the extrinsic curvature of, of the immersion C inside Rn plus one. So you can think of this second term as the norm of some high order derivative of the extrinsic curvature of C inside Rn. You can think of it like that. It's not, it's not exactly the same, but you can imagine it in, in, in the following way. You can uh, perform the first variation and uh, define the L2 gradient flow of this um, energy Fm to be the following evolution equation. You discover that the correct evolution equation is given by dt phi equals a huge term times your normal vector nu and uh, inside this parenthesis we distinguish two, two pieces. On the left, the highest order term, and on the right, the rest of the, of the expression. Now, we don't really care about uh, what there's here on the right. You have uh, a mean curvature, and you have the symbol denotes a suitable polynomial of some order depending on nabla nu and the second fundamental form. But uh, the most important uh, part here is the, is the first one that is the one of highest uh, differential order and up to a constant, up to sine, it is the nth Laplacian of the mean curvature h phi. okay? So here you have the Laplacian applied m times to the function h phi. okay? So it's definitely a high order, we are in the correct uh, session of the gap. Um, it uh, is uh, apparently a difficult evolution equation to, to, to study and you find all the basic properties and the, the basic questions solved uh, and among those there is the computation of this first variation inside the, the work by Carlo in 2002 where he introduced and uh, firstly studied these, uh, these flows. And uh, okay, so we have an energy, we have an evolution equation, uh, evolution equation. And before before giving you the the result, let me uh, just uh, e explain what what uh, we are looking at. So with a couple of example, a couple of cases, uh, in order to to familiarize with uh, with this uh, energy function. Um, for example, if you take n equals m equal 1, then you have curves in R2, so the circle immersed in R2. And in that case, the energy gives you 1 plus one time. Nabla, the normal, gives you the, the curvature of the curve squared. And you recognize that you have a well-known energy that we will study more, uh, more deeply in the next part of the talk. At the, it is called the elastic energy of, um, of a curve. That is, eventually, its length plus the L2 norm of the curvature. Instead, for example, if n equals 2 and m equals 1, we have surfaces m inside R3. And in this case, you find with... Uh, you, you find integral of 1 plus, again, a nabla nu, that is going to be equivalent to the 2 norm of uh, the second fundamental form of this surface inside R3. 
And uh, you know that by Gauss Bonnet, the same energy here is just uh, a topological constant plus area plus Wilmore energy. Uh, so um, these are just examples, but uh, it's already a, a, a motivation for uh, noticing that uh, this uh, strange expression eventually leads us also to uh, well-known and well-studied energies. So it's not uh, it's not that bad, not uh, not that strange actually. And uh, in, in a sense, so FM is a generalization of functionals like these in any dimension and with any possible uh, differentiation order of the second fundamental form, okay, of the extrinsic curvature. And uh, fine, so once uh, we observed this, we have the starting point for the study, that is a, a theorem by, by Carlo Mantegazzi in the same work of 2002, saying that uh, if M, that is the order of differentiation here, of the normal vector, uh, if m is sufficiently large, well then, for any smooth initial immersion, there exists a unique smooth solution and it exists for all times to the L2 gradient flow of fm. Uh, observe that m must be high, and actually this, this uh, inequality is optimal, and this inequality includes the first case, but not the second one. Indeed, the second one is just a variation of, uh, of the Wilmore energy. Eventually, we said the, in, in the second point here, the energy functional is area plus, plus Wilmore, which, uh, just like Wilmore, develops singularities. So it, it is correct that this case is not included in, the, um, in, this, uh, in this inequality. So this inequality is, is sharp, if you want. M needs to be strictly bigger than the integer part of N divided by 2, and provided M is that high, then we have that solutions exist for any times. And uh, then, of course, uh, our question is, okay, once you know that uh, uh, solution exists for any times, so what about the convergence? What about the long time uh, behavior? And this is going to be our uh, result. But before stating it, I want to uh, give a last motivation of uh, why uh, we could be interested in this uh, in this uh, problem and um, the motivation is given by um, the following fact that is called uh, the possibility of uh, producing approximations to mean curvature flow they are called the singular approximations of mean curvature flow and um, the, the question the, the problem and motivation is, is the following um, let's consider this uh, other form of, uh, of the previous uh, energy function and introducing this parameter epsilon here in front of the norm of nabla m nu, okay? Now what happens? Of course, if you let the uh, epsilon go into zero, your energy function becomes the area functional, which produces the mean curvature flow. And so the, the problem, the, the, the aim of this singular approximation, very roughly speaking, is the following. Since we know that for suitable M, the one here in this, in this theorem, we know that this epsilon that doesn't change too much, it's just a rescaling of the, of the, um, of the energy functional, okay? So uh, also for also the L2 gradient flow generated by this energy, if M is greater as in the previous theorem, then the gradient flow exists for every time, okay? So, um, no, knowing the previous theorem, uh, for suitable uh, M, since we observed that in some sense, uh, when epsilon goes to zero, f epsilon M becomes the area function, well, then maybe we can hope that a gradient flow for f epsilon M, which exists for every time, should converge to a say, weak solution of the mean curvature flow defined for all times, just because we pass to the limit a sequence of uh, gradient flows existing for every time. And why uh, could this be important? Well, because, as we said before, the mean curvature flow in general has singularities, so it, it, stop, it uh, just the solution stops at some time. So instead, Passing to the limit solution existing for every times would lead you to 
a notion of solution to mean curvature flow able to pass through singularities of the mean curvature flow because eventually you would get uh, you, you hope for a solution to mean curvature flow defined for all times for sure it will be some weak notion of it but uh, it will be defined for all for all times indeed and um, as far as i know but I, I could be perfectly wrong, of course. The problem, as stated like this, is it is still open. It was introduced in this um, work by Bellettini, Mantegazza and Novaga in 2007, uh, but uh, they actually uh, were able to prove that uh, indeed you have convergence of this gradient flow to mean curvature flows, but for all times um, below the first time of the singularity of the mean curvature flow, starting from the same initial datum, uh, which was... Uh, fixed. But uh, instead, uh, I, I guess it is still unknown what happens for, for larger times. So again, the question is, uh, what about large times? This motivated us to, for example, study the long time behavior of the gradient flows to um, uh, energies like uh, these FMs. And uh, this led us to the following, uh, to the following theorem that just states the smooth convergence of those flows. So assume that M, just like before, is, uh, this, uh, satisfies this optimal threshold. Well, then, for any smooth initial immersion, phi zero, the unique solution given by the previous theorem to the L2 gradient flow smoothly converges as t goes to plus infinity. As we said, this includes the um, elastic flow of curves in co-dimension one, and um, this is going to be the content of the next part where we want to discuss a little bit the details of the proof uh, behind uh, this type uh, of, of results. And we will study exactly the elastic flow, but in general co-dimension, so of curves in Rn. And uh, we will do so because uh, it is, I believe, the, the simplest case, but it already contains all the important ideas for the proof of a, a result also like, uh, like this one, which is eventually just more technical and, and complicated. But uh, all, the, all the ideas were already present in that uh, our work of, of ours, which is eventually a, a, a development and a, refine, a refinement of, of previous uh, work that I, I will mention next time. So, okay. Thank you very much for your uh, attention and I hope to see you uh, in the next uh, video. Goodbye.